Well, if you follow my YouTube channel, and if you don't, thanks for joining us today. Make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, blah, blah, blah. But it talks about um, in the little description that I encourage and inspire you guys to have fun in the garden. Well, today's Wednesday walkabout is all about having fun in the garden. Things that are absolutely delighting me right now. So what do you say, Stuart? Let's do it. Want to get started? Okay, this is fun thing number one. I absolutely love my new push reel mower. I had one of these at my other house before I went to artificial turf, and it is just to me one of the, I just, it makes me feel like a little kid again. I love the whirring sound of the reel. I love the fact that the reel cut is very, very sharp. I can set it at different levels levels, but mostly I like it because it's just so ecolog ecologically friendly. The clippings will drop and recompost and feed the lawn. It doesn't put out any carbon gases. I'm getting really great exercise as I push it. And more importantly, it's just really safe to use on the terrace, on these slopes. I can do one small area in absolutely no time at all, and I promise you it's a lot more fun than vacuum. Vacuuming. You can get these at different widths. And by the way, this is not in any way a sponsored post. I just love these kind of real mowers. I will definitely put a link in the description box below. And Stuart, today, aren't you putting up a little explanatory video? Mm -hmm. If you watch on YouTube, on your iPad, or on your phone, where to find the links and where to find the description box, Stuart's putting up a little explanatory video. But I digress. I got this. It went together so easily. I think this one is just like 14 to 15 inches wide. You can get them in wider lengths or wider widths. This one is from American. It was around $100. I got it immediately. If you have Prime, you guys know this. The shipping is free. You might be able to find something similar at your local nursery or independent nursery. Um, but I just love it. It is just so flexible and so mobile and so lightweight that I can even pick it up with one hand. So when I have to store it in the back, it is no, no problem. So in very short order, I can mow this entire terrace section in its entirety and have fun doing it and burning up a few calories and getting in some steps. But I want you guys to appreciate before I mow it, look at how green it is. And you, we, Stuart, I don't know, at some point we need to put a before picture yeah. where we showed what this looked like before I fed it, encouraged the spread of the grass, and before I weeded it with my little dandelion weeder. So it looks great now and it will look even better after it's mowed and edged. Okay, a couple of other things about this fun thing number one is that you don't want to wait until your grass gets too long or it really will be difficult to mow. The way, the reason I really like this is I have somebody who comes once a week to help me edge and blow and things like that. But this way, I can mow in the interim and I can keep it as short as I like, again, without putting out a bunch of bad carbon and stuff into the atmosphere. The other thing is that when you mow, whether it's with a push reel mower like this one, an electric mower, 
um, a gas operated mower, gas powered mower, that you always want to reverse directions. So one time I may go this way horizontally, the next time I might want to go vertically. And what that does is it keeps you from having wheel tread marks in your landscape, in your lawn from the mower itself. And it just makes it look, grow, makes it grow in more evenly. And it's kind of fun to do crisscross patterns. But notice how lightweight this is and how easily I can navigate it up and down an incline. And I promise you, I am having fun doing this. Now, size, but, size of yard matters too, right? Yeah, the size of yard matters too. If you don't have, if you have a huge lawn, this may not be for you, but I have a little postage stamp or a throw rug of a lawn. Now, I wanted to show you periodically, well, when I want it to do it, it won't. But periodically, if a little stone or something gets caught in the reel, then it will just kind of stop on you. Um, but in this case, it's just working beautifully right now and I can't, I can't get it to do it. I've got footage of it happening. I could put it in for you. Okay. So this is just, this took me, what do you say, Stuart? I mean, it's, it's been, under five minutes since you Oh, started. definitely under five minutes. <laughs> I mean, definitely under five minutes. Yeah. And I had so much fun doing it. And the other nice thing is that I can mow this little section. I can go in the house and do something. I can come back out. I can mow another little section. And it's just so easy. The other thing that I like about it is the more I mow over it, the more groomed it appears. And also, I'm chopping up the blades that are falling even finer right. with each pass. I have a question. Okay. Does it have settings on height? Yes, it does have settings on height. Cool. Now, when you get it, it defaults. This one defaulted to the highest setting. And that is something that you want to take into consideration. As it gets hotter and drier, you want to raise the mower setting on your lawn mower. And that's true of any kind of lawn mower, including this real mower. Um, but I probably, like I say, they, they had it on the default setting as the highest because they said they want you to practice with it first. Well, believe me, this is so mindless. It really requires no practice, no engineering talent to put it together, and even, you, even no coercion of your husband or your kids to do it because it is just so darn fun. Let's move on to fun thing two. This is fun thing 1.5. Remember to be a good neighbor and after you mow, clean up your clippings. I think it's really fun to use this lightweight works blower. It is my um, tool of choice to clean up my grass clippings. Fun thing two. You guys already know this. It's definitely to plant specimens, natives, nativars, whatever that will attract the pollinators and butterflies. Because I don't know about you, I find it so much fun to work. Look at all of this activity over here, Stuart. There's that butterfly we were trying to track, track a while ago. And every time we moved, it would fly away. Can you see it on the agapanthus? I haven't found it yet. And see I'm all sure the bees have. here. I see all the bees. 
Oh, over there. Okay. There it went. Okay, it's, it's in it. and amongst, and there's been all sorts of them this morning. We're just disturbing them. Um, but it's in and amongst these butterfly candy bushes and buddleias, and I absolutely love them. And that leads to my question of the day. They come in three or four absolutely glorious colors, and I've got all of them. I've got the grape, I've got this lavender, I've got another one that's a purple, my hues, I'm not using the proper term for them, and I have them in white. My question of the day is, if you are going to plant them in your garden, or if you already have them in your garden, what would be your favorite color? You can see these over here that I need to deadhead, and I haven't really done my morning rounds yet to do that. But boy, they just keep on blooming their heads off, and all of that rain helped. This, at first I thought this was my favorite color, and then this lavender came out, and it's just exquisite. And I love the subtlety of it. Isn't that beautiful? It is. I'm getting close to which one. What was the last one? Yeah, and then there's also on the other side I have some white ones. But they're just ex they're just exquisite. And if you're going to grow them or if you're going to ask for them for a gift, for a Father's Day gift or if you got one for a Mother's Day gift, then tell me which would be your favorite. And also, I guess question of the day part two in addition to which is your favorite color would you mix them up like I have or would you dedicate an entire space to just one color because what I love about them is these are all going to grow together in moss and they're going to be absolutely beautiful keeping good company with other great pollinator attractors. So I've got some salvia in here. I've got some uh, beard's tongue, obviously the agapanthus. Point out the salvia real quick because I didn't the get there. The salvia right here, this is another southern living plant. Isn't that gorgeous? Yep. I like that so color the, a lot. Yeah, so this is all purples up here. And again, as it grows together, it's just going to be this mutter, butterfly mosaic magnet that's going to be absolutely incredible and to me there is nothing more fun than gardening amongst the butterflies so that is my fun thing two let's move on to fun thing three i feel like dr seuss yeah, fun thing three coming up well, you guys know that I love my southern living plants. I love baby jam, and I certainly love the better boxwood. But, but I pretty much love every boxwood that I meet. And these are really a new, um, a new crush of mine. I told you about them last week, but I'm gonna tell you about, about them again because so many of you bought them and were so thrilled. And by the way, you contacted me. I don't know how many messages I got about these after you received yours, but they sold out. Now they are back in stock, both this variety, which is Cranberry Creek, but they also have some Green Mountain ones I noticed that are back in stock right now. This grower is really amazing. Uh, let me see, this is, I'm gonna show you my invoice so you'll know this is not a sponsored post. These are some that I just found and bought from Premier Plant Solutions. And while you are on, and I, this is a, a smaller company that purveys through Amazon, so you can feel good about it. And when I went to, to look them up, I thought, I'm so impressed with these boxwood cone topiaries that were only about $44. And by the way, if you're a Prime member, again, this is not, a, this is not an ad, I'm just giving you my tips. If you are an Amazon Prime member, the shipping is free. So you don't have to pay. I think somebody said they paid $17 for shipping. So if you're a Prime member, shipping is free. They got here in a matter of days. But what I did today, which was very fun, in addition to topiary, which is, I, I find, just inherently fun anyway, I went online and I looked at their different um, offerings through 
premier plant solutions on Amazon and I saw all sorts of things at a very good price point, even including some natives. So I would encourage you to go online and check them out. Again, I'm not getting paid for this. This is just a really stellar product that I purchased online and could not be happier with. It came, I just unpacked these and I think they look absolutely magnificent. And I, I have a spot for them, which leads me to one of my sayings, Stuart, if you'll walk down here with me, and that is always steal from Peter to pay Paul. So I, I put two of them, I planted two of them here to kind of introduce the porch coming up the walkway. And I planted them in the middle of these little boxwood villages, which are still growing up. And I loved the way they look. So I ordered two more because down here at the point counterpoint, at the opposite end of this grid, I had planted two Baby Jim round ones. And I think what I'm gonna do is I am going to steal from Peter to pay Paul. I'm gonna take these round boxwoods that are a little bit larger. I'm gonna put them someplace inside the terrace so I'll have even more evergreen structure in the winter. And then I'll take those two cones and plant them here. So I'll have wonderful symmetry and drama. Then once everything kind of gets in place, kind of gets settled in, then I will come back and do some pruning on all of them. Not real tight pruning up here. I want probably a little bit of a more natural fluffy profile on these boxwoods, but I think it'll be really, really fun. So if you haven't already purchased one of those conical topiary boxwoods, um, they are back in stock. Again, we will put the description in and links in the description box below. And also, if you go to my Instagram and stories, we always try to put something there with a link you can just click on and go immediately to the source. And fun thing for probably second only to watching a seed germinate, which is so, so fun for me, is a plant that's starting to break dormancy and it's coming out and setting bud. And a, along with that, I would say when something does what you are envisioning it to do and the window box is starting to perform in spades. So I planted one of, actually two of these pineapple guavas. You can get a link below. This is a Southern living plant. And, and not only are they putting on new beautiful gray foliage, and I love the architecture of the plant, but they're really starting to bloom profusely. And yes, they will make tiny little guavas, the fruit at the base of the flower. This one was in pretty good shape when I took it out of the greenhouse. But this other one over here, not so much. It was a lot scragglier, but I pruned it back and now it is starting to show all sorts of signs of coming to life. And there are brand new buds all along these brown branches. So before you know it, this will be completely flushed out and, and starting to bloom in its own right. And then you can see Again, very, very fun. I have a couple of peppers here. One ready Whoa. to pick. Now, is that not fun, that's, being able that's, to pick that's the from your window box? That's pretty fun. So I've got pepper number one, and I misspoke. I'm going to have to, Stuart, we're going to have to, you know how we put up a graphic for question of the day? Mm -hmm. We're going to have to put up some kind of graphic that was wah, wah, when I misspeak about something. Because again, if you're new to this channel, you might not know that none of this is scripted. We just <laughs> do this beginning to end. It is a true vlog. We don't do multiple takes um, unless we have an accident or something. And so sometimes because my brain works faster than my mouth or my mouth works faster than my brain, I misspeak and I use 
a wrong term or I, I identify something incorrectly. I can't let her lie to you guys. Every single word of this is scripted. I mean, it's amazing how much, how well she memorizes. <laughs> I wish I could memorize that well. I mean, it's well. pretty phenomenal. I, I, I wish I could memorize that well. But <laughs> I, told, I told you guys that this was a sun gold tomato. And in actuality, it is a sun gold tomato. Oh. But it will get far larger than I expected. And some of you obviously pointed that out to me because in my head I was thinking it was a yellow pear tomato which is like a cherry tomato shaped like a little yellow pear. So this may be getting a little bit overly rambunctious and I may have to I may have to pinch it back but that's okay. Um, I also want to point out to you while this is looking beautiful the color can you imagine when this scaviola that I put here in the window box cascades out and grows as much as this one here in a pot that mirrors its color beautifully on the patio or off of the patio, when this all starts cascading over, it will be fabulous. And when, when it, now that it's getting hot again, this lantana will fill in. But something that I wanna point out to you is this is a brutal exposure. It's in very hot sun and it faces south in bright, bright sunlight. So you can see, Stuart, I'm going to give you time, if you don't mind, to walk around to yep, the front that's what I'm, that's and what show I'm this head on. Page. And while you're doing <laughs> that, I am going to do another fun thing because I've got two more peppers on the pepper on this side. Picking peppers from my window box. These are going to be something yummy tonight. I just know it. And I want to, by picking them, it encourages more production. But this is what I wanted to show you. You can see that this, this stuff is, it's really handling the sun and the heat pretty well, especially the shrubs. But in the heat of day, no matter uh, no matter how heat and drought tolerant it is, during the day, this it's about noon right now, and at high noon, this is going to start flagging. It's going to start drooping. It doesn't necessarily mean it needs water. It just is having the vapors, <laughs> and it's fainting a little bit from being out in this heat and in this sun. But it will recover no problem, as will all of the lantana and the Joseph's coat, which I've been pinching, and the pentas, which are some of the other really tough residents of this window box. And by the way, I just love it that as this starts producing fruit and flowers and attracts pollinators, I can see that from my massive bedroom window, which is also very, very fun, living from the inside to the outside and the outside to the inside. Now let's end up with fun thing number five. Okay, on the opposite side, a repeat of our fun thing, I think it was number three, um, or maybe number two, were these beautiful buddleias, and here's the white one, Stuart, that I oh, failed that's to what point. You were about. Yeah, the okay. white buddleia <laughs> on the other side. It, it happened that all of the white ones ended up on this side. But if there's anything more fun than a butterfly candy, it is blueberries growing up and getting almost ready for the picking right in the middle of the Buddleia blooms. Now, how fun is that? Now, some of these are looking a little bit worse for wear because this is their, remember, this is just their first year. And some of these were already in somewhat of a stage of burying when I got them. But look at all of this new growth. And here, here's some more. And there's actually been a couple that have been ready to pick. But I, I just a, think they're so pretty. They're pretty. I have a, I hope I can say it fast, a, a blueberry story. Uh, there's a lake in Wisconsin called Lake Siskwit uh -huh. that I visited with a friend as a kid. And on the island in the middle of that lake, there were wild, wild blueberries. blueberries. His, oh my his gosh. His grandmother made fresh blueberry rhubarb pie. <gasps> oh my goodness. If you guys have a recipe. Oh, look, Stuart. Look good. here. Okay, here, look here. here. Look here. Are you twisting? I got, oh, look wow. there. Look there. Your first, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna pop this in your mouth. Your first blueberry. Delicious. From the cottage on the hill. Is that not so fun? Delicious. 
Ooh, that's a good shot. Charming, beautiful, unexpected, elegant and edible landscaping, just as I described in my book. Here, sir, we could put our book advertisement right here. It's already been oh, in. Oh, and good, and good <laughs> news, fun thing for me, the publishing date of the Garden Journal is now, has been moved up from in December to uh, November 7th. So you guys can pre-order that now, and I'm going to be giving you. Poor Stuart, he's having to. Walk I'm trying to very, walk out and walk not very tenderly and not crush blueberries. any blueberries, because <laughs> uh, that is not fun. Squished blueberries on your new concrete walkway oh, wow. are not fun. I hope you guys enjoyed some of these fun things. I hope it was fun. Please, in the comments below, share some of your fun gardening experiences that you have been attentive to in the past several days, because we can all experience vicariously our mutual fun in our gardens. You guys have a great Wednesday and I hope you enjoyed this fun Wednesday walkabout.